When you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. All right, hello, YouTube. Welcome back to the Grease Comedy Channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about if Ned Stark had accepted Littlefinger's offer of basically ruling together, what would have ended up happening? Would Littlefinger still have betrayed Ned? Would things have gone down a little bit more peacefully? What would have actually happened? And that's what we'll explore in today's video. So before we get into it, I did want to say a massive shout out to my Patreons and members. Thank you for supporting me. If you did want to become one, you, you do get content early. And I also will be doing some exclusive content, especially around when House of the Dragon comes out. So look out for that. But I want to start out today's video with a quote just to, ref to refresh everyone exactly on what Littlefinger offers so that you guys know. And then we'll break it down. Hear me out. Stannis is no friend of yours, nor of mine. Even his brothers can scarcely stomach him. The man is iron, hard and unyielding. He'll give us a new hand and a new counsel for a certainty. No doubt he'll thank you for handing him in the crown, but he won't love you for it. And his ascent will mean war. Stannis cannot rest easy on the throne until Cersei and her bastards are dead. Do you think Lord Tyone will sit idly while his daughter's head is measured for a spike? Casterly Rock will rise, and not alone. Robert found it in him to pardon men who served King Aerys so long as they did him fealty. Stannis is less forgiving. He will not have forgotten the siege of Storm's End, and the Lord's Tyrell and Redwine dare not. Every man who fought beneath the dragon banner or rose with Balon Greyjoy will have good cause to fear. Seed Stannis in the Iron Throne, and I promise you, the realm will bleed. Now, look at the other side of the coin. Joffrey is but twelve, and Robert gave you the regency, my lord. You are the hand of the king and protector of the realm. The power is yours, Lord Stark. All you need to do is reach out and take it. Make your peace with the Lannisters, release the imp, wed Joffrey to your Sansa, wed your younger girl to Prince Tommen, and your heir to Marcella. It will be four years before Joffrey comes of age, but by then he will look to you as a second father, and if not well, four years is a good long while, my lord. Long enough, to dispo long enough to dispose of Lord Stannis. Then should Joffrey prove troublesome, we can reveal his little secret and put Lord Renly on the throne. Let's talk about kind of Littlefinger's plan and why he wants to go through it. I didn't continue the quote, but Littlefinger basically says that his price would be modest. Now we know, given future events, Littlefinger wants Harrenhal, which makes a lot of sense. It would make him a lord of a larger castle. It gives him a lot of titles and incomes. All that makes sense. So let's take a look and a step back here. And the first thing we have to analyze with this quote is Littlefinger just kind of joking with Ned or making fun of Ned because Littlefinger is in a position where he knows exactly what Ned wants, but he's kind of playing Ned for a fool because Ned will not do these terms, right? It's one thing to make Ned have to ask you to get the golden cloaks, to get the gold cloaks to bribe them for him. It's another thing to lie and be dishonorable and not act on what is the true on what is happening and the truth of the situation. So, in my opinion, right off the bat, this is not a serious deal by Littlefinger, in my opinion, given Littlefinger's knowledge and all of that. But even if, let's say, Ned accepts this offer, and I don't think Littlefinger was expecting him to do so, what would have happened? Would Littlefinger have even backed Ned if he had agreed to this? Because, yes, in a certain regard, Littlefinger controlled who won the Game of Thrones here. If Littlefinger supports Cersei, Cersei wins. If Littlefinger supports Ned, Ned wins. But the problem is, I think Littlefinger was spinning a tale that's not truly accurate, right? Because we know Littlefinger doesn't like the Starks. And I know people have offered the idea that, oh, Littlefinger's moved on from Catelyn, so he doesn't really care about Ned like that, but... The problem is it goes further than that. Not only does Ned marry the person Littlefinger wanted to, but also Ned's brother gave Littlefinger an injury that could have easily have killed him. So you're sitting here and you're looking at exactly what Littlefinger is doing. Everything kind of revolves around the Starks going down or at least going into a war. And so at this time, at this time, it almost makes no sense. Motivational wise, it doesn't make any sense to really back Ned because Let's say that Littlefinger even, let's say Ned even does this, right? And he becomes Hand of the King, Lord Protector. I still think in that scenario, Cersei would have him gone. One point or another, Ned would be thrown out of power. Cersei would offer more to Littlefinger to get Ned out of there, whether that's deporting him to the north or, again, just imprisoning him. So, again, to me, logically, it doesn't really add up. And the fact, again, that 
Ned knows this knowledge of them being bastards is very dangerous, right? He's already told Cersei the truth, that he knows all these things. And so he becomes a very dangerous prospect. I don't think there's a way in which Ned and Cersei could have coexisted over someone like Joffrey. And so the point of all of this is really to say that Littlefinger would never have accepted this, right? He would not have gone along with it whatsoever. And again, this offer is really to show Ned's massive flaw. How willing is he to dip into the Game of Thrones? He's willing to dip into it enough to get the gold cloaks, but will he dip into it even further? It's to show and play on Ned's morality, what things he'll do and what things he won't do. Think about Ned's last chapter in the book. It's all about, again, once again, Ned's ethics, what he's willing to do. Will he lie to protect his family? And that's really what Ned's arc in this book is about, is testing his ethics, testing his values. What is he going to do when those are put to the test? It's very similar to a lot of the things in the past that we haven't really explored with Ned yet because they haven't been revealed. And so when you put all these things together, you look at this what-if situation, and I know people have wanted, to talk, have wanted me to talk about it, but there really isn't a timeline in which this would have gone better for Ned, in my opinion. If the only thing, the only thing that changes here is I think Ned and Littlefinger would have had a closer relationship until Littlefinger again, eventually just betrays him anyway. And the same thing plays out. I think the scenarios stay the same. The only difference I could possibly see is that if Ned does not declare that Joffrey is a bastard and all these things, I think he is then allowed to go north. That's the only difference. I think Cersei would do the exact same thing that she did to the will in terms of just ripping it up and saying... You know, you've served faithfully and whatnot, but I am the queen. I am going to have my own hand of the king. You're going to be sent back north. Thank you for your service. All of that, yada, yada, yada. If he then refuses that and says, that's not the case, Robert made it, you know, here, and he thinks he has the backing of the gold cloaks, then a coup could happen there as well, and then he would still lose. So, again, I've talked about this at length in my reread. At, by the time Robert dies, like, after that happens, Ro Ned is screwed. He has no chance of winning the Game of Thrones. His only chance could have been with Renly, in which he denies that, because, again, testing his morality, his ethics, he's not willing to do those things. So, again, it's long story short, nothing would have changed, really, in my opinion. Maybe Ned would have been able to go free to the north. That could have changed some things. That could have changed the things going in the future, but I don't think that would have happened. Even if Ned is allowed to go north, I think given his injury to his leg... I think Cersei or Littlefinger would have just assassinated him, whether it was for A, Cersei trying to keep Ned uh, quiet, or whether it was Littlefinger just trying to kill him and putting it on the Lannisters to start that conflict even more. So, yeah, that is my conclusion of this what if. Let me know if I should do any other what ifs. If you guys like this, let me know. I might do more what ifs in the future if this one does well. And I see you guys all in the next one. Bye, guys.